All right, excellent. So ready to start, we're gonna be doing things a little differently today. We're gonna to toggle back and forth between the slides and the handbook. What we're trying to do is to have all the meaningful content and information that we need to be successful at our roles here at GitLab available in the handbook and have the handbook be that single source of truth. So before we decided to try that format, we put these slides together. I will love your feedback. This won't be the ideal situation because there will be toggling back and forth, but ideally you'll find that as we're walking through the handbook, it is helpful because you'll know exactly where you can go to reference this information after this training. So thank you very much for being here today. Because of that, I won't be in presentation mode due to the toggling back and forth. So here today we are to talk about peer feedback. It is going to be me doing a lot of talking right now. I love your feedback. I'll open an issue, I should have done that in advance, to get feedback on whether or not you wanna do a follow-up to really ask more questions and even role play. But there's a lot of content here, so we're gonna focus on the content in the next 50 minutes. So I do believe that feedback is the foundation for a growth culture. GitLab is growing very quickly, and we're gonna be hiring a lot of new teammates and they won't have the same history or the background or the experiences at GitLab that we have had. And in order for them to successfully integrate with GitLab, to get to know the culture, to become successful, us giving them feedback is super important. In addition, they might give us feedback of where we can continue to grow and become stronger. That's just one example of why feedback is important in a growth culture. But in the end, we're all more successful if we know what we need to do to be successful. And knowing how people are perceiving what we're doing can be very helpful in that. So first of all, this isn't about process today. So stay calm. This really is just about us giving you some skills and trying to motivate you to give each other feedback. But we're not, out, we're not laying out a complete process around this. There will be 360 feedback, which will be a process but this is more about our everyday feedback that we do with our, our teammates here at GitLab. And it can translate outside of GitLab too, to be honest with you. So how do stunning teammates make each other better? We make each other better by being ex amazing examples of being a stunning colleague and also giving each other feedback about how we can also be a stunning colleague for you right back. And we do want our teammates to be amazing and we can help them be amazing. And it actually really is a wonderful gift to give to the people that you work with. I also do fundamentally believe that a rising tide does lift all boats. And that's true with who we hire into GitLab and that's true in helping us as teammates all be stronger and better together. But feedback can be hard and we recognize it can be hard. You don't always feel like someone wants to be told information they don't wanna hear. It's a little easier when it's positive. And so we're gonna, we are gonna focus more on the feedback that's hard to give today. And I don't want it seem to be biased that I, I think constructive feedback is more valuable than reinforcing feedback. That's not the point here, but it is more difficult. So we wanna focus on making that easier for you. I would also though encourage you to make sure if someone's doing something great, you tell them that too. And don't just tell them it's great, tell them why it was great. So as we're going through this, the detail, the specificity, it, it applies to positive feedback just as much. Fear is a natural reaction to moving closer to the truth. I don't know if you, any of you have ever had that experience where you're thinking to yourself, oh, I just don't want to know. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't help us grow. And that doesn't help us know the things that we need to know. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that piece as we talk about the fear of holding back. So you'll see that that's here in the handbook. And it can be a scary process. You can think that um, people are misconstruing the feedback you're giving them, that they're being cruel to you. Uh, sometimes you want to avoid accountability. Sometimes there's a lack of commitment, a fear of conflict, an absence of trust. Uh, all of these things can be feelings you have when you're giving and receiving feedback. And so I think that it's good to acknowledge that that fear exists, but it's also good not to let that fear hold us back. And there's things that we can do and ways that we can think about feedback that can really help with that. And we'll go into the, the, um, the absence of trust a little later on. And uh, there are reasons why we hold back. There are, there are questions around, uh, will they believe that I have a good intent? Will they be angry at me? 
for giving them this, this, this feedback? Will they appreciate it? Will they become defensive? Will they lash out at me? Will they retaliate against me? Uh, all of these are, are fears that you could have when you're giving feedback. It'll damage the relationship. Uh, we're, we're great friends now, but if I tell them this, maybe they'll get mad at me. Those are fears that I want to impress upon everybody that I don't want us to have here at GitLab. And that is just as much in the hands of the giver of the feedback as it is the receiver. And we'll get later in the presentation about how to receive feedback well. But for the person giving feedback, you really do have to give it with good intent. If your intent going into a conversation with someone is to hurt their feelings, then you're doing it wrong. Your intent should be to be helping them be more successful and to giving them a leg up by giving them that the information they need to be, be successful. Uh, an example that I use in this is uh, when you have cilantro in your teeth and you've been hanging out with all your best friends and you get home from the restaurant, look in the mirror and you're beside yourself because you notice you have this big green mass in the middle of your middle teeth and you're a little bit annoyed that no one told you. That, that your friends sat across you in that entire meal and let you smile and let you laugh and never said, hey, Barbie, you have something in your teeth. I think most of us would appreciate someone telling us that. And, and feedback really is a gift that way. And so I would encourage all of us when someone gives us feedback to take it in the manner of they're trying to help. And when you give the feedback, give it in a manner of you're trying to help. You don't know someone's intentions when they do something. You don't know if, if, if the feedback that you're giving that someone intended to do the behavior that you observed. So it's best not to assume bad intentions. It's equally best not to assume bad intentions when the person giving you the feedback. So if we can all go into it with just the, the lack of assumption of bad intentions on both sides, it's wonderful and you can give feedback in a better way. Don't assign feelings to someone. Just let someone know how you perceive the event or the action and let them tell you their reasons for doing it or not doing it. So the consequences of withholding feedback. There are consequences to withholding feedback and uh, we follow that here. It's the same consequences quite often in your fear of giving feedback. Uh, so the, the consequences of withholding feedback is going to be potentially a weaker team, potentially not achieving the results you need to achieve, potentially having a perception of you that you don't want to have exist. There might be little things that we're doing in our jobs that uh, we have the best of intent for, and we don't realize that um, people are perceiving it in a much different way. And so having someone be able to speak up and tell us that before it becomes a reputation that we've formed is super helpful. So don't feel like you need to hold back. You know, she's only done it twice. I'm sure she'll never do it again. Uh, don't assume that. Don't assume I will, but maybe give me that piece of feedback to avoid the chances that I will again in the future. Hopefully that makes some sense. I'm really going quickly through this. Some questions to prepare, a way of thinking about this as you're going into the feedback conversation is, what is the most powerful feedback that I have for you? right? We don't want to get nitpicky. We all have ways that we can be better, but we don't want someone, you know, necessarily uh, comment on every aspect of our selves, our work. Uh, so really do think about through what is the powerful feedback I have? What is the feedback that I will make a difference? What is the feedback that will make a difference for this person if they can receive it and actually do something actionable from it? And then it's completely fine to say, the reason I might be afraid to give you this feedback is, that can sometimes disarm the conversation. That can often help people to understand that this is hard for you too. So remember when you're getting feedback from someone that's hard feedback, it's hard for them too often. They're putting themselves out to invest in you. So don't assume it's easy and they just like to spew um, criticism around. Um, hopefully the feedback is given in a way that doesn't feel like it's just criticism, but uh, understand that they're putting themselves out there for you as well. And please be selfless enough to put yourself out there for others to give them that feedback. So what comes first, honesty or trust? This is a hard one. It is easier to give feedback to people that we trust. It's easier to be honest and vulnerable with people that we trust. However, 
sometimes you do need to give feedback that requires trust before you've earned that trust. And it's a little bit of a absolutely what comes first, the chicken or the egg. For me, if I was in a meeting with all of you and I was sitting here on this call with a you know, strawberry seed in my teeth and one person pinged me on the side and said, hey, Barbie, I'm going to inherently kind of trust that person more. I know that in the next meeting, I can rely on them to uh, give me the feedback that I needed to not embarrass, continue to embarrass myself. And that does build trust. But that's what we go into about uh, relationship trust versus task-based trust. So it tends to be easier to give that feedback on task-based trust than behavior-based uh, feedback. Sorry, task-based feedback. So if, if someone has a typo in their presentation, it's not as scary to say, hey, Barbie, you spelt trust wrong, than it is to say, you know, Barbie, your speaking style in this presentation is very ineffective and it doesn't engage. And if you did a little more of A, we might want to listen more to what you have to say. That can be a harder piece of feedback to give because it addresses me personally. It may feel more personal for me than, yes, there's a typo. It's pretty objective. It's not subjective. And uh, we can easily go in there and fix that typo. However, you will find that sometimes engaging in that task-based trust builds task-based feedback, builds the trust for more honesty in the more challenging pieces of feedback that will come. But I encourage you to take the risk. I, I think that the fear that people will be angry at you for providing feedback actually could quite often be the opposite. If you are going into that piece of feedback with very good intent, I find that most people appreciate it. And we do have a link here at the bottom to an article that's been written about people actually want the negative feedback you hate to give. This article is based more on managers, but it applies to individuals and teammates and peers as well, not just managers. So, uh, so that is kind of a piece of advice of where you might start with if, you're, if you haven't yet built that trust yet, but you still wanna start building on the honesty and being perceived as being honest and candid, then sometimes it's easier to start with that task-based feedback. However, I would encourage you not to hold back on the behavior-based feedback. The behavior-based um, things that we do are often the most difficult things for us to change. So pretty obvious one of my issues is how fast I talk. It's really hard for me to change that. It's something I have to focus on every day and try to get better at. So that type of feedback is something that having someone tell me when I'm doing better at it that they noticed is huge for me, but also having someone kind of give me that ping of, hey, Barbie, you're doing it again. We can't understand you is also super useful and helpful to me. And I would hope that nobody would feel they have to hold back on that, but I understand that they do. And so I think that as much as we can be strong and courageous here at GitLab and not hold out on each other, I think it can help us all be a stronger and better team. So how to give and receive feedback well. I'm really struggling with this toggling, so I'm really sorry, everybody. Um, when, I, when I end up going to the uh, handbook, I have lost where I'm at compared to the slides. Uh, so um, preparing to give feedback. Figure out what the root cause is that's making you feel like there's a problem here that needs to be addressed. So what are the behaviors you've experienced? What are the core issues? What would improve your relationship with you and that other person <clears throat> if there's something that's getting in the way of it now? Are they, are they not reliable when they say they'll work on a project? It, you know, time and time goes by where they say, yeah, it's gonna be done tomorrow, it doesn't get done. And that makes you frustrated with them and that makes you not wanna depend on them. Uh, is, 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 that, is that what's happening and the root cause of that? What is the root cause of that? But again, talk about the behavior you experienced don't assume the intent. So if you're experiencing me not getting back on something I said I would, don't assume that means it's not important to me. Often, if someone doesn't do something that they said they do, you assume you're not prioritizing them and that you're not there, that whatever they are asked for isn't important to you. So don't assume it's not important to them when you get that feedback, but ask the clarifying questions, explain the impact to them, explain the effect, explain what you're observing, offer suggestions, and hear back about what the problem might be. 
if there's someone on my team who's under delivering or I had that perception, I want to seek to understand what are they dealing with? What other conflicting priorities might they have? How can I help them work through those, prior, their, those, those conflicting priorities? But if I just get angry, don't give the feedback and walk away, I never actually learn what could be the root cause and help them through that. It's not different with peers. So I think that that identification of being able to explain uh, what you're experiencing, what the impact is, offering suggestions is a great way to be helpful. Uh, I have a rule in my house with the children that if they don't like what we're doing, what activity we're going to participate in, they don't just get to complain. They have to suggest a different one. I, I don't want to hear, no, I don't want to go bowling. I want to hear, I, don't, I would prefer going ice skating. Right. I, I, I want to hear a suggestion, not just a complaint. And it's, it's just a lot more helpful to the person that you're talking to. Communication style is very important, too. And this one is harder because we don't all communicate the same and we don't all respond the same to a particular communication style. Some of us much prefer very, very direct. Don't waste time. Um, just tell me how it is. Don't try to soften the blow. Other of us maybe are a type of culture that it's a little bit more high context and super, super, super direct would make us just stop listening uh, because we, it, it's just rude uh, in, in the environment and the culture we come from. So try to understand that because it's easy to say, it's not my fault, um, that's their problem, they should be able to take it, uh, but that doesn't mean you're being effective with communicating with them. So understanding where they come from and understanding what's effective to them goes a long way to it being received and actionable and something that may actually help them be more successful because they heard the message. So how we transmit affects reception as well. So it's not to say that that's an excuse. If someone says, don't ever give me feedback, it hurts my feelings, I can never hear it, that that's okay. That's not okay. <laughs> we, all, we all need feedback. We all need to hear feedback but just try your best to understand each other so you can do it in a way that's effective. And that goes both ways too. If you're getting feedback from someone from a culture that is much more low context and much more direct, then understand that too and try not to take it personal. And so I've, you've, some of you have heard me mention, those who've been here before, but it's mentioned again here because again, new employees every day. Uh, the culture map is a really good book to read that will help you understand other cultures better and help you understand how, what, how your styles affect other cultures. And it's fun because you can take a quiz afterwards to figure out what culture you're most like. Uh, and, and it helps you understand yourself a little bit better too. So again, consider how direct you need to be. Consider how hierarchy affects direct feedback. Hierarchy should not affect direct feedback here at GitLab. Uh, this is not a company that wants to be hierarchical and you would never give feedback to me if you worked for Scott. No, absolutely. Um, anyone on Scott's team should absolutely feel free to provide feedback to me. Not all cultures are as comfortable with that. So we do need to help them. We need to help people understand that that's not the way we do things at GitLab, but we need to also be aware that it's a natural tendency for some regions of the world and some just you know, the culture map is about the country you came from, but the reality is we come from families too. It might start with the country, but it might then go down to family unit and friend group that affects how we react. But uh, just, just be thoughtful about that. Responding to feedback. Say thank you and mean it. And I'm serious about that. Really mean it. Really try to get yourself, no matter how much you disagree with the feedback, no matter um, how it's not what you wanted to hear. You still need to be thankful that someone gave it to you. It doesn't mean you need to act on it. It doesn't mean you need to agree on it. But someone invested time in you, say thank you. Then ask clarifying questions. Try not to do it in a defensive way. Try to do it in a way of really seeking to understand. Really put yourself in a mindset of, I am not being judged here, I am being helped. What questions should I ask in order to get the most value out of this conversation not to deflect it onto you not to say it's not it's not me it's you um but to really understand where that feedback's coming from and then take a moment to reflect on the feedback it doesn't need to be with the person sometimes it's okay to say thank you for the feedback ask a few clarifying questions 
go back, turn off Zoom and lick your wounds, and then really try to reflect on that feedback and try to know what it means. And then really think through what are the most impactful actions you can take, and then prioritize those. But don't over-engineer or overdo it. I have done that so many times in my career where I get a piece of feedback from one person, I assume that everybody thinks that way, I try to change my style with everybody else I'm working with, and then I come to realize, oh wow, I really over-rotated on that one. <laughs> and then make, I become much less effective in the other direction. So don't over-engineer it, and then follow up. Check in, am I doing better? Uh, and as a giver, also follow up. Wow, you're doing a lot better. Um, or you're not, and here's some more things you can do. I see the effort, or I don't see the effort. Did you not agree with my feedback and you don't think that you should do anything? Which is okay if you don't agree with the feedback and you've reflected on it and you've thought it through and you've decided, actually, I think this is still the most effective way for me to do it. That's okay, but explain that to the person. So from Nadia, what if you feel flustered and it is visible? Uh, say it. I, I think it's completely fine in these feedback discussions to make yourself vulnerable as the giver too. So the person who is feeling flustered isn't always the person receiving. <laughs> so just be super, super honest that this is hard for me to hear or this is hard for me to say. And wow, I really wasn't expecting that. I, I need a moment to process and then I'll come back to you. It's okay not to have the discussion happen in one sitting. So if you are getting super flustered, break away. If you're the giver of the feedback and the person that you're giving feedback to gets super angry and combative, also okay to say, I wanna give you time to think about this. I didn't mean to offend you. I was really trying to help, but we can't continue the conversation until we're, a better, until we're in a better mind frame. It's okay to walk away from the conversation and then come back to it. So a lot of the content that we're covering here also applies to hard conversations in general. So here at the bottom, we've covered that a little bit. And um, it is not unnatural to get angry and defensive. It's not unnatural to do silent fuming. Um, so just try to be open and honest and real. It's, it's the most efficient and effective way of us interacting with each other. If anybody on this training today thinks they're perfect, surprise, you're not. Um, and, uh, and it's okay for us to know that we want to get better. And it's a wonderful thing when you feel you can. And it's a wonderful thing when you feel like people are able to help you do that. So let me actually in there in terms of the presentation piece, I did go through very fast because I think it is better to get people sharing stories or asking questions. So hopefully, uh, I can get some people on the call to either ask questions or to share an experience they had in which getting feedback was super, super helpful to them, or in which they saw the, someone they, they gave feedback to actually became a lot more effective, and they thought that they felt a little bit good about having a part to play in that. Um, I'd, I'd kind of like to, I guess, ask a question or just share something with everybody about um, sort of the how we receive feedback I think sometimes when because we communicate a lot with slack and lots of our communication is written and I think sometimes it's easy for people to misunderstand or get the wrong idea um, when things are written down it's very off it's so common to get things the wrong end of the stick as we say in the, in the UK <laughs> um, that, that can easily happen with with uh, written communication and I'd like to think we all kind of take a step back before we reply to messages sometimes, but I know it's very easy if you're sort of busy or whatever, you may say the wrong thing. And sometimes it's good to just follow up afterwards and just say, hey, that might have come across wrong. What I've actually meant was this. I didn't mean it like that. And, you know, if we need to get on a call, very happy to do so. I just wanted to kind of share that if anyone else has gone through a similar experience. Yeah, I think, I think you're right, Abby. I think we often um, assign our own tone to written communication that may or may not be the tone that the person wrote it in. Uh, and I think that whatever that happens in written communication, 
I'll be honest with you, I know we're all in different countries and I know that time zones are an issue, but I would do my best to take time to actually have an actual call or Zoom with that person to say, hey, I do want to clarify what you meant here because I took it like this and if that's how you meant it, please let me know. If not, please correct it for me. Uh, but I think that sometimes when it comes to feedback or difficult conversations, they should be conversations. I think that, um, again, the written feedback, I would hope would be more task-based of we need to get this thing done and this is my recommendation for how to do it. But um, the, the hard conversations are hard to have in writing. And I think that there's a reason that um, we use our voices as well. I had a quick question. Um, what do you do when, um, or, or how do you handle it when someone doesn't ex accept feedback or doesn't, you know, or accepts it, you know, sometimes you can tell when people are, this is not like specifically here related, this is everywhere related. You can see when someone is there, they're present, they're hearing it, but you know that you've, they've got a brick wall yeah, that's really hard and that's part of what I want to plead people with here is to please hear the feedback you get and please accept it even if you don't agree with it. Uh, yes, I agree with you. Some people you get feedback to and they, they nod and they smile and you think, okay, they're not upset. They get it and they walk away, they throw it out the door and they don't do a thing with it. Other people will simply say to you, you're wrong. I don't want to hear it. Um, I think at some point um, you have to give that feedback too. Like, hey, I'm trying to invest time with you and uh, I'm trying to help you out here. Feel like you're not appreciating it. Can you tell me how I might be more effective with giving you feedback? And, and kind of sometimes just opening it up to the other person and saying, I'm trying to help you here, but clearly I'm not. So help me help you. If I'm, if I'm trying to help you be more effective, how can I do that? Eventually, certain issues you will have to escalate if you if feedback doesn't work. I always feel like the first thing you should ever do is to give feedback to the person you have it for. So, if I have feedback for Jacob, I should tell Jacob first. And then, if it still doesn't work, then maybe I might have to go to Jacob's manager at some point. But when I do, I will go to that manager with a lot more information. I've worked on it. I've given him the feedback. This was the reaction. I now need your help. Can we book in this together? It may need to happen eventually, but I think that the, I mean, we talked about honesty. We talked about trust. I think the easiest way to lose trust and not establish honesty is talking about someone instead of talking to them. And while we don't like to hear feedback sometimes because it's hard, uh, I think we even dislike it more when we find out what's being said about us and not to us. And so, I think at some point that's an okay conversation to have as well with the person who's not receiving the feedback. Like, hey, I want to take this directly to you. I want this to be effective. If you do think I'm wrong and this feedback is incorrect, let's talk about that. But don't just be a brick wall. Let, let's make some progress here. Um, yes, very, very true. Um, Dana, the really, really one of the really great effects of going directly to people with feedback is they get that fee if they if it is systemic, they'll they'll get that feedback from multiple sources. If we're all doing it, uh, then they'll get that feedback from multiple sources, and they will no longer be able to suspend belief for as long that it's not them, it's it's not it's not me, it's you. When it's not me, it's you and you and you and you and you and you. I might need to actually start to figure out. Okay, it's me, <laughs> and that can really help. A lot of times when it just comes from one person, which is most often your manager, you start to think it's more about you and your manager. Uh, and when it comes to other sources, you realize it's, it's bigger than that and, and more important than that. Let me. Passive aggressive feedback. How should we deal with avoid them? Um, Marsha, do you have an example of that? You can feel free to speak up. I can, I can talk to it, but uh, I think this is another way that is you want to avoid assuming intent. So if someone were to give you feedback and, you was, and you're assuming that they're being passive aggressive, examine why you think that. Uh, 
try to ask some probing questions to get at whether or not that's what's actually happening. And, uh, and, and don't just pretend you don't notice it, right? If you feel like someone's doing that, call them on it. But before you call on them, ask some clarifying questions so you're not just assuming something from them. But go ahead and share an example you might have, Marcia. Oh, yeah, cool. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, sometimes instead of uh, trying to be direct to someone, we, we sometimes tend to speak as, uh, as if we're speaking in book. So, hey, guys, please don't do this, do that. So how should we kind of avoid doing that, like uh, being very alert with ourselves to not do that? And uh, what should we do when we see this kind of feedback that it's quite not helpful because we're saying like, hey guys, this is wrong. So no one takes accountability for that. So no one's tried to, to, to improve that thing on them. Um, and at the same time, the one that is giving the feedback is trying to avoid conflict. So, you know, how should we handle all this? You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's hard. And a lot of that goes back to different cultures. So um, is anyone here on the call, probably not with the time of day it is, from Japan or a country that has a little bit more of a communication style that you read between the lines? No? Okay. Um, so I would say, Marcia, again, call it out. So if, if someone, you know, I have, I, I have this problem where I do this. So I try to be nice and by being nice, I'm just not helpful. <laughs> and so I might say, Hey, it'd be great if we did a, and then you take that as optional. And really I meant you must do a, uh, then I think it is good to give me that feedback. Barbie, when, um, you say to me, it'd be nice if I did something, I think it's my choice. If it's not my choice, you need to be very clear on that with me because I'm not clear on this. So I think it's, I think it's the kind of just real direct feedback you need to give people. And then ideally we can all try to do our best at being really direct with each other. Again, it is most efficient. Um, Chin Ray said, I'm here. So Chin Ray, would you like to um, talk a little bit about the style of directness in your um, region? Yeah. Yeah, I just I just wanted to point out that uh, culturally, it's um, it's very difficult to either, especially giving feedback, um, like Marcia said, where you're trying to avoid conflict, and uh, you you know this is important and you have to say it, but it's it's difficult, and in most cases, you're you're thinking you're you're trying to think further ahead, and you know one you're wondering what's what's giving this feedback going to. What, what results is it going to have? Is this person going to be, is it go, are they going to receive it? Are they not going to receive it? And if they receive it, then you're worried about what could happen to the relationship. So I think it's, it's, um, it's, it's important that we, we're having this and um, it's all written down and people can always refer to it. And if we have a, um, it's sort of a system, like you're saying, uh, do this first, do that first, give this feedback. In some cases, uh, culturally you have to create a relationship then it makes it easier to give that feedback. But a lot of times you'll find people from, um, from Africa in general, I think, and, uh, and uh, Asia as well, will hold back on that feedback, um, just basically coming uh, from, from a, a cultural perspective for those reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think um, we can't expect everybody to be as comfortable with the same things that we personally are with. Uh, but I'm hoping that some of the recommendations on this page help in having those conversations and help in knowing what to think about when you are having those conversations. And again, being patient with each other. So sometimes people will try the uh, style that they're most comfortable with first until they see it's not effective. <laughs> and then they will escalate to a different style. But um, sometimes it's a lot just to say to someone, who does tend to try to soften everything. Look, you can be completely direct with me. I can take it. You, 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 it's easier for me if you just tell me exactly what you're thinking. But don't expect that they can change everything about themselves in terms of how they feel comfortable giving it. But that's all just keep helping each other be more comfortable with it. That will happen by demonstrating it. 
what I've learned very easily is it became easier for me to give feedback after I had gotten some hard feedback and then I realized I became better for it. Then I started believing more that feedback is important because feedback had helped me and now I should pay that forward and help others. So sometimes modeling it is a great way to help us be stronger at it. Obviously, Abby and I creating this, this, um, this page on the site is meant to help you at it. It can be a conversation starter. If there's someone that you need to provide feedback to, please look at this page, change it, add to it, make it better. So that if you're gonna have a hard conversation with something and I'm gonna sit down with Abby and have a conversation with her, maybe I first say, hey, let's read through this together and let's try to, let's try to practice some of these things because this could be a hard conversation. But it's out there for us both to use and us, for, for us both to look at. So I'm hoping that that can help too, but please, this is the start. This is GitLab, we iterate, we can make this better and we can do better with giving feedback as well. So, yep, the difficult conversations is another good book. We can add that to the, well, Abby, I think already said she's adding it. Okay. Yes, I do think consistently asking for feedback can make it easier to give. That's true. What I would recommend that you do, if you're having a meeting with someone and you've never asked them to give you feedback before, maybe let them know before the meeting that you're going to ask for that. So I will tell you that when I go into a one-on-one -on -one with someone and I just ran, I just surprise them with, hey, what feedback do you have for me? I don't necessarily get as good a feedback because they haven't had a chance to think it through. So if you have a regular one-on-one -on -one with someone, you can make it very clear that's gonna be a regular topic for you. Eric, Eric Johnson and I do this. Our one-on-one -on -one document starts at the top all the time with feedback for Eric, feedback for Barbie. We know going into our one-on-ones that we're gonna give feedback to each other and we're prepared to do it. Um, so that's super, super helpful with getting more thoughtful feedback. The spontaneous question can be good, but sometimes doesn't get you as much information as you would if they had time to think about it. So any other questions or tips? I just had a comment about um, just in my experience with sort of high context cultures, sort of as a manager, encouraging peer to peer feedback can sometimes help sort of not alleviate the need for direct feedback, but it can help like sort of overcome that cultural barrier because the feedback that your peer, that their peers are giving is often the same feedback that you would also be giving. Um, so it's, it's sort of third party, but also helps encourage just more feedback in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's more data points for the individual, right? And it, it helps everyone be more comfortable with it, and it's more data points. And that's never a bad thing, I don't think. I think good data points are great. Thank you, Lau. Anything else? So can I, let me, I'm going to stop sharing because I'm still learning Zoom. 61 people are on the call right now. These 61 people that are hearing right now what we're having to say, can we make a little commitment to ourselves that within the next week, we will find someone we can give feedback to that will be helpful to them and that we can ask for feedback from someone that will be helpful to us. I will say right now, I'm officially asking you all for feedback. And if it's through a Slack, if it's through an email, or if it's through a Zoom call, I will be thankful for it. So don't hold back. You feel like that's cheating? <laughs> it kind of is. Don't worry, I'll take it off the line too. <laughs> so hopefully we can all do that because we are the people who took the time to be on this call today. And so we can maybe be the beginning of a movement here at GitLab to start being a lot more candid with each other and our peers and uh and be the people who are the example that can be set for some of the people that weren't able to make it on this call but hopefully will watch the video or read the handbook uh, but i would love to see us getting better at this i really really would i and one of the best things to do to get better at this and i'll leave you with the parting words next time anybody comes to you complaining about anybody else on this team ask this question what did they say when you told them and if the question is, I have, and the answer to that is I haven't told them, 
then the next thing is, is the only reason you should be telling me is if you need a conversation to help tell them and you need me to help coach you through that. Otherwise, the person you should be telling is the person you have that feedback for. And that's a hard one. I, it happens all the time. We're talking about each other. Let's talk to each other. Okay, great. And we'll do a quiet countdown in my head. <laughs> and if there's any other questions or they're not, we'll sign off. Okay. Have a great rest of your week and a wonderful weekend, everybody. Bye.